Today's lecture we will discuss about the construction of phylogenetic trees right yesterday's class so we discussed about various aspects on conservation so could you please remember something what we discussed in the last lecture yeah right so what is the meaning of conservation so how far a residue is conserved in a right in a tiny protein sequence how far a specific residue maintains at the same position in different organisms in different homologous sequences whether it maintains the same residue at the same position or it changes with respect to different organisms and with respect to different time. So, if it is same then we call that this residue is conserved at the particular position. So, how to understand or how to derive how to qualitatively measure the conservation of the residues at different positions in a sequence. In this case it is a two step procedure what is the first step? Yeah, we try to calculate the frequency of occurrence of amino acid residues at any particular position, right? Then we convert these frequencies into scores. For getting the frequency of occurrence, there are different ways to get the frequency of occurrence. What are the different ways to get the frequency of occurrence? Unweighted frequencies. In this case, we don't give any weightage to any sequence or no weightage to any amino acids all residues and all sequences are treated equally. So, it is useful if you compare a closely related sequences in this case most of them are from uh, homologous families and several sequence residues are the same. So, it is useful for the closely related sequences. Then what is say another another method to calculate the frequency? Unweighted. Weighted frequencies right. What to do with the weighted frequencies? No, we give, give different weightage any specific weightage for any specific residue which like to be the maintain the same position then we give weightage or any particular sequences for example, if we have many sequences from closely related ones homologous sequences and some of them from distant related ones then if you give weightage right to include the information from distant related ones then we give weightage. So, the third one we discussed about the independent counts. So, how randomly distributed with respect to your original uh, distribution right you can get independent counts to get the frequency. Then when the frequency is calculated then we convert these frequencies into scores. So, we discussed about different types of methods to get scores. What are the different methods to calculate the score? Entropy based. Entropy based. Variation. Variation based measure. Sum of, sum of pairs method right. So, in the case of the entropy based method how to work? So, you get the probability of the particular amino acid residue that is frequency of residues at any particular position multiplied with this no. logarithmic amount. So, it will give you the entropy based method. In the case of variance based method, it gets information for the same amino acid residues at different positions. How far they change, how, the, how far they maintain at different positions in the amino acid sequence. So, you get the, get the information. In the case of sum of pairs method, what we do? We take these pairs and then we can use any matrix. Okay, so, you can uh, normalize any matrix and you can use the any matrix to, see, to give weightage to similar residues compared with the residues of the different kinds. So, we get the conservation then we discuss about the normalization. So, we can use different normalization procedures to, get, to normalize the scores. In the case of entropy based method if your particular position is occupied with the same residue what is the score? 0 right because the, the frequency is 1. So, 1 in logarithmic of 1 that is equal to 0. So, you get the numbers negative values for the variable ones. So, you can also normalize right based on 0 to 1 or based on this average value of 1 and so on. So, when we discuss about few online resources what are the online resources we discuss to calculate the conservation score? A L 2 C O right and then concert. What is the input for the A L 2 C O server? Alignment. alignment you give the multiple sequence alignment. So, it takes the multiple sequence alignment and you give the score you give all the options you can choose any of the options to get the score. Then for the concept you can give the PDB ID right it will automatically get the sequences and do as alignment and get the console score. So, today if you have these sequences right if we check this discuss about the multiple sequence alignment there are many sequences and which sequences are close to each other and how far it takes to change one sequence to other sequence with respect to different organisms. So, in this case we can draw a tree type of method right make a trees to show which residues are similar to each other 
So, phylogeny you, you, if you define this is a description of the relationship any biological relationship right expressed as a in the form of tree. For example, if you take the human genealogy say the grandfather here and your grandmother. So, they have several children. So, now if you see he is the he is a father like you see from mother tree we can get the mother. So, here they have so several children right. So, you have this is maybe you this is your siblings your brother sister so on. Here also you can have different things so like this for the different son, sons or daughters of these grandparents. Then here you are here so you have the your, your son your daughter and so on right. So, you have these little relationships to understand the relationship for example, whether you can see any similarities in the shape or any of these similar organs if it look similar then you can see they may be close to each other from this to this you can easily you can know that and from it here you can you can also you have a relationship and here to grandmother daughter my daughter to the grandmother some possibilities then if you go for the more and more generations then we do not know. So, but you can listen that okay he looks like his grandfather right he look like his aunt. So, how to do this there are two different ways one is look like the shape or you are looking at any of the organs or then, then depends on time how long it took from one generation to other other generation. So, you can understand two different aspects one is you can see the time from one generation to other another generation and also you can see the relationship how far the two people are related to each other on what aspects. So, if you took the close related ones you can see much similarities when it goes further and further you can see similarities, but less compared with the close related ones. Likewise, you can see the phylogeny so this is among different objects which assumes the homology because they are similar to each other and this also depends upon how they classify. So, then this analysis what is the phylogenetic analysis? It is investigation of this evolution relationship right from uh, one, one organism different organisms among the group of related sequences by giving a tree like of representation just we discussed earlier. So, we give a tree like of representation to discuss the relationship to understand the evolution relationship. In fact, there are various ways to explain the relationship, but this is the easiest way right. For example, if you say A and B are related to each other B and C are related to each other A and D are related to each other. So, you can explain different ways, but the tree wise representation is the easiest possible way to understand the relationship among different organisms. So, if you see the organisms with high similarity like it just I discussed earlier they are closely related. So, then they are dissimilar. So, in this case the ones which are closely related they put nearby each other. So, you can easily understand okay, these two are close to each other. So, due to the availability of data the taxonomy is first start they started to construct trees right. So, they rely on the comparison of phenotypes like how the organisms look like and to infer the genotypes right what gives this type of appearance. Likewise, in the family tree as I showed earlier. So, you can see look at this how they look like then they will try to compare okay because they look like so these two are similar to each other right. Then they try to do this, but when it happens to the various systems for example, if they take the light detecting organ eye to see the common behavior of these different organisms then sometimes it fails because this is uh, eye is, uh, we can see from humans flies mollusks and so on. So, then they try to use different types of information to infer the uh, the sequences which are similar to each other the organism which are similar to each other. So, currently due to the availability of different sequences or protein sequence or DNA sequences it is easy and it is reliable to compare the sequences and identify the lineage between different organisms because we have the different sequences for DNA right where you can get the DNA sequences gen bank or EMBL or DDBG and so on. So, you get the protein sequences when you produce a uh, unique resource right you get the uh, protein sequences. So, currently also we get different sequences from several organisms right 
and the sequences are also reliable. So, easily you can compare these sequences to understand the evolution relationship and how far it took from one organism to different organism and how about the different variations in the sequences and so on. So, now if we have the sequences we can construct trees to show the evolution relationship of any genes or organism at least 3 or more genes or any organisms. For example, if you have 3 organisms A, B, C, if A and B are similar to each other with minor change for example, if there is a 2 amino acid change right and B and C are also similar to each other which are 5 amino acid difference and you can see A and C are similar to each other for example, you can see the 10 amino acid difference. Then if you have 3 cases one is A, one is B, one is C which are close to each other A and B are close to each other because we have the mismatch of only 2 residues right. Likewise, if you have more number of data 3 or more sequences from the differences in the nucleotides or in the amino acids you can see how they are related which two are close to each other and how long it takes to get this divergence depending upon the variations you can estimate the time of this much time that it takes to to get this conversion uh, to get the uh, divergence times from one organism to other organisms. Then you can see the nature of common ancestor right if you make it tree you can see what will be the common ancestor for example, here A and B are close to each other. So, they may have a common ancestor right like this you can see the common ancestor when you construct phylogenetic trees. So, how to represent trees how to draw trees. So, if you I show one example here. So, if you have a common ancestor here this is the one D is here. So, then from here I take the trees. So, this goes from number 5 through C we can see 3 and 4 right and through A you can see 1 and 2. When you make a tree for example, this is A this is B both are common to each other okay, you can you can connect these two. So, if you see this figure so, which one are close to each other? 1 and 2 and 3. 1 and 2 are close to each other and 3 and 4 are close to each other right and this 1 and 2 and then 3 and 4 it takes time, but they have some similarity which is a common with C and then all these things 5s. So, they will be connected together at the point D. So, we draw trees there are two different aspects one we can see the dots and you can see the lines. So, lines represent branches and the dots represent nodes you can see this the node and this line they are branches. And if you see the nodes there are different types of dots here you can, you can, you can see the two different types of circles one is a closed one here 2, 3, 4 and 5. And also you can see some of the nodes which are in the interior there is open circles here okay this this and this. So, here these two circles they represent two different aspects the one which at the end tip of the branches they are called the terminal nodes okay these are called the term this is called terminal nodes. Like you can see the gene or any organism or any 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 sequence that that is we know the data that information is available and you can see the another dots inside ones and here these are the internal nodes okay for example, these are internal nodes which represent common ancestor, but the information we do not know because if you look into the Unipro database or if you look at DDBG database you will get the sequences that information we know. Then which two are common and which two are emerged in specific period of time that we do not know. So, when you make this type of trees you can try to understand which, which organisms are close to each other and which organism emerges first and how long it takes to have the next one and so on. So, if you have this type of trees there are two types of trees for example, if you see this node it has two branches some cases you have three some cases you can four. So, if there is two then this is called the bifurcating ones the nodes. So, there can be more branches so this one we called as multiplicating. So, right here we have 2 for example, if you have another one here that will be 3 or 4. So, in this case you can distinguish the bifurcating as well as the multifurcating. And another aspect is in some cases you know how long it, it takes from one, one organism to another organism. Some cases we do not know 
So, this will tell you the scaled trees and the unscaled trees. If you take okay 100 years or 10,000 years, so if you can scale it, then this is called scale trees. And if you do not know the time, then that case you can you can call this as unscaled trees. So, now if you have a trees, right, making long the trees, right, that like space. In this case, you can simplify the trees in the form of specific notations, like you can use some parentheses. If you write the parenthesis, this will tell you how the tree looks like, and this format is called the Navic format. How to write this Navic format? For example, if you see this tree, one and two are close to each other, so one and two are close to each other, and then three and four are close to each other, right? Three and four they are close to each other. And these two, this close to each other, this is this node A, and here these are close to each other, this node B, but these two are close to each other. So, now you can say these two are close to each other. Now, the next one is the number 5, 5 is alone, so 5 is here, and this is and this 5 are connected with each other. So, you can see another bracket here, then we can see this is the format. So, go to the internal brackets, then you can construct a tree. For example, 1 and 2 is connected, 3 and 4 connected and these two are connected with each other and 5 is connected with everyone. So, this is a format which you can write represent trees using this parenthesis ok this format is called the Navic format right. If you have a trees you can have nodes you have branches two types of nodes terminal nodes and internal nodes. Terminal nodes represent any genes or any organisms so data are available internal node provides information on common ancestor that we do not know when we construct the trees then we can have the information and there are scaled trees and unscaled trees. What is the difference between scaled and unscaled trees? Time, time we know the time or we do not know the time right. Then we have the depending upon these uh, branches we have bifurcating and multifurcating right and you can write these trees in a form of a specific format this is called the Navic format. Now, there is another type of trees that is called rooted trees and the unrooted trees. What is rooted trees and what is called unrooted trees? The rooted trees means you can see a single node which is designated as a common ancestor. So, in this case we know the ancestor, but the linear results we know, but we do not know uh, the, the relationship, but we have the ancestor and you have the path to lead, lead to this tree all, all this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 finally comes to this point in specific period of time that is called rooted tree. So, rooted tree a single node is designated as a common ancestor. In the case of unrooted trees we know the relationship, but we do not know the direction. For example, 1 and 2 are related and 4 and 5 are related. So, all they are related, but where they starts, where they ends, we do not know, but they are related to each other, right. So, for example, if you see a group of people, you can say, ok, they look similar, so maybe related to each other, but I do not know where we have the ancestor, maybe fourth generation, fifth generation that we do not know. Some cases we know you look similar, but we know the ancestor. Okay, your forefather or your grandparent, grand grandparent was he. So, you both from the that's different lineology. Right, this is how we can see the rooted trees as well as the unrooted trees. Okay, now for example, if you have the three species, right, one, two, three, how many times you can have the rooted tree and how many times you can have the unrooted trees? Right, if you have three species, one, two, three, if the unrooted tree we do not know the common ancestor. In this case, you can draw in any way, whatever way you draw, so you will get only one tree, right, because we do not know about ancestor. But the case of rooted ones, ancestor could be 1, ancestor could be 2, ancestor could be 3, right. In this case, you will have 3 different ways to construct this rooted trees. So, this is 1, this is 2, so you have the third one, right. Here is 1, here 2 is here, and 3 is here, and then it emerges 1 and 2. Here first one is here and second and third. Here first is the second one, this is the common one and first and third. There are three different ways you can have the rooted trees, right? If you think about the ancestor. Like us, if you have two data, how many rooted trees and how many unrooted trees? One rooted trees and one unrooted trees. If you have three data, three rooted trees and one unrooted tree. If you have four data, depending upon the first one you will have 15 rooted trees and 3 unrooted trees. So, this is the equation used 
to calculate the number of rooted and unrooted trees depending upon the organism. So, n is the number of species and you can use this equation 2 n minus 3 factorial divided by 2 into n minus 2 into n minus 2 factorial. So, this is the equation we can fit these numbers here. So, number of rooted trees and the number of unrooted trees. For example, if you have 3 data, how many number of rooted trees? 6 minus 3 that is equal to 3 factorial that is equal to 6 divided by 2 right. So, 3 minus 2 equal to 1 here equal to 1 into 1 1. So, this equal to 3 by 1 that is equal to 1 right. So, here n equal to 3 then this case n r equal to 3 right. So, n equal to 3. So, number rooted trees equal to 3 you can use this equation. Likewise, if you say unrooted trees, this is n equal to uh, 3, then n u equal to equal to 1, right. You can fit this equation. Likewise, you can use the 4 data or 5 data, you can get the number of rooted and unrooted trees. And this question, I think once they ask in the gate exam. So, how many, how to relate number of rooted and unrooted trees.